Okay, for you guys learning English, what's the hardest? The accent. The accent? Yeah. What about grammar? Um, because um, when I was studying in Thailand, we just learned only grammar. Okay. okay. But we never learned for speaking or yeah. Great. And how about you? What do you find the hardest for English? I think there is uh, the hardest part is like to change your thinking from the Chinese okay. speaking to uh, English. Speaking. I think that's the hardest part. Good, that's a really good point. Okay. What about people that are raised with two native tongues? Okay, I was raised with English, Spanish, and Italian. Okay, and I'm considered, it's called, linguistically called non strict trilingual, which means that the predominant language that came out of my mouth was English, but I was hearing Spanish and Italian my whole time growing up. So I speak all three. Jeremy, you're raised bilingually, right? Right. French and English. French and English. And do you speak Taiwanese? Yeah. And, and Chinese? Yeah. And so, it, when, when you were, like, really little, did you, like, your grandparents taught you Taiwanese? Mm. You learned from grandparents, right? But with your parents, do you speak? Uh, it's funny <laughs> though, like, when they, when they were, like, like, brought me to my grandma's place, when they are at well, I also have to, like, stay with my grandma. So I speak Taiwanese all the time. Okay. And then when I go home to my family, my parents speak Chinese. And okay, okay, yeah. yeah. That's really, really common. You know, we talk about the mother tongue, but Taiwanese is the grandmother tongue. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the kids learning from their grandma. And then do you speak Thai? Only, only uh, um, second Thai. Sometimes like my mom and my dad talk to me, Tachi. You know oh, Tachi? You speak yeah. Tachi? No, 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 my mom and my dad. I just, I can listen. Uh -huh. I can understand, but I cannot speak. Wow, Tachu is the Chinese dialect that's spoken in uh, Southeast Asia. Good job, Hua. Oh, yeah. Haka. It's similar to Hakka. It originated from Hakka, hmm? the original. But it's like Kujia Hua and that whole, the whole Indochina, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Tachu. Oh, my dad is a Hakka as well. Fujian. Yeah, Fujian, 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 Fujian dialect. Fujian dialect. So it would be similar to Taiwanese, maybe. Yeah, just some. some. Like Chinese, they say Yiza. Oh, you don't mm. know quite the same. So what, what winds up happening when, when you're, I, I don't know as much about French Canadians because we don't know anything about that other country. <laughs> I know more about Thailand than I know about Canada, although my home state borders on Canada. Um, with Taiwanese, for example, you generally, you know when you're supposed to speak Chinese and when you're supposed to speak Taiwanese and when you're supposed to speak English. Like when you see a foreigner, you don't, talk to them in Taiwanese, do you? No, I don't. And when you're at school, even when you were a little kid at school, you didn't talk to the teacher in Taiwanese? Yeah, I, yeah. I think I tried, but my teacher asked me, don't talk, in China, uh, don't talk Taiwanese in class. And the same thing, out, outside of your home, you probably never use touch you. No. Well, it's like a home language. Oh, uh, yeah, if, when my mom talked to my dad, I tried okay. to listen what they were saying, and they tried to use touch you with yeah. me, and I said that, why you need to say speak Chinese? Uh, because we are in Thailand, why you need to speak Chinese? Because yeah. at that time, I don't like my parents to speak Chinese to me. All right. So what happens when you're raised like bilingual, trilingual? The kids wind up with they sort of know. Okay, when I talk to grandma, I talk Taiwanese, or when I talk to my parents, maybe it's Tachu. But I know I, when I meet foreigners, automatically speak English. Yeah. Automatically, even if that foreigner is from Russia or something, talk to him in English. And what happens is your brain is actually developing very separate, completely separate compartments. And when you speak Taiwanese and Chinese, you probably don't have to switch very much because you're using a totally different set of your brain. Like once you go in Taiwanese mode, you have all the words, everything you need in Taiwanese. Or you go in Chinese mode, you'll have all the. But what happens when we learn languages later in life, when we learn them, because we don't learn our native tongue, right? Mm -hmm. We don't learn it. Your mom didn't sit down and say, okay, here's a bunch of words. I want you to memorize these by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, grammar. Think about grammar in your own language. Should your parents ever sit down and do English grammar exercises with you? I mean, maybe when you were in school, they helped you, but not like when you were five, where they're like, okay, okay, John, I'm going to give you a bunch of verbs. <laughs> Tell me the past tense. <laughs> like, they didn't do it. You just, you just, picked it up. How did you pick it up? From listening. And why do you never make a mistake? Because you listened and listened and listened. And if you, like Jeremy or, or some of the others, you grew up with two languages, you knew 
you had a full set of vocabulary in French and a full set of vocabulary in English and you didn't, didn't translate, you certainly weren't translating in your brain, right? Well, what's very interesting about bilingual people is that they're usually really bad translators. How come? Because their brains are completely separated. <laughs> so the advantage is that they're really fluent and particularly their pronunciation mm -hmm. will be really, really good. And in fact, even let's say now you're an adult, you're at university and maybe you don't speak Taiwanese very often, but if you went somewhere to learn or to practice Taiwanese, your pronunciation would probably be very perfect. Even if you forgot some words and things, but your pronunciation, because you learned perfect pronunciation when you were a child. But generally bilingual people are terrible translators because their brains are completely separated. People who learn a language are better at translating. So both of you could probably translate better with English and Chinese or English and Thai because you learned English. You learned it. Okay? There's a difference in a learned language and a mother tongue. Okay, now Today, we're, that's ALG, and then an offshoot of ALG is called Crosstalk. Crosstalk is a communication tool, and you guys are studying business. And I know you do a lot of talking about how can we do business with another country, communicate with people. Now, do you think that most of communication, do you think that it's linguistic or non-linguistic? I'd say linguistic. Okay, you'd say linguistic. Generally, yeah, it really, dep really depends on the setting. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, well, in the situation we're in, it's like mostly linguistic, yeah. Okay, kid says, Mom, can I eat another piece of pie? And he's like a big fat kid, right? <laughs> Mom, can I have another piece of cake? And the mother goes, if you want it. Okay, linguistically, what did she say? She said yes, didn't she? Yeah. But was she really saying yes? No. no. She's saying no. How do you know that? By body language, what else? Tone of voice, yeah. right? Facial expression and using all these clues. So let's say you're talking to someone who's a non-native speaker and you need to communicate with them. Can you use those same tools to understand? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can, right? You, you can use the same tools. So be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> right, why is that, Jim? Well, because like what you just did, like me saying that to maybe some uh, Indo Indonesian woman, She's, good. I mean, giving all sorts of mixed signals. Very good. And it's been very confusing. Very good. good. Yeah. Very good. We call that cultural understanding. So when we do, for example, I said in, uh, in Germany, I was talking about my friend, because I went to school in Germany for four years, and I said about one of my friends, man, he is so smart. He is so smart. And in North America, this is smart. In Germany, this means He's freaking crazy. <laughs> and it really means freaking crazy. It doesn't just mean regular crazy. <laughs> it's like the worst insult. In the world. Yeah, and tell why you do this, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, pretty similar. But it's funny because North America, this means like really smart. And um, the other one was oh, everybody hold up your hand. Show me, Jeremy, how do you count to five on your fingers? Mm -hmm. Canada. One, two, three, four, five. The thumb was one, John, in America. One, two, three, four, five. The finger is one in America. Yeah. The thumb is one in Canada. What is it in time? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. But show me, John, show me four. I want four of something. Show me I want seven of something. Seven. Okay. That's I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's in your opinion. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like that. Okay. So. How do you do the number seven with your fingers? Because Taiwanese has. Yeah, look. See, I'm I love that. Look at that. This is Thailand, also.